Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. We pray that your week has been good, that life is sweet, and we pray, as always, that all of us continue growing in the knowledge of Yahweh's laws and commandments. I want to thank you for tuning in. I also want to thank all those that are supporting our ministry. Yahweh bless you. We also want to just remind you that wherever you fellowship, that you need to continue using your tithes and offerings to bless the ministry you are a part of, as well as to use your tithes and offerings to help those that are in need, to help those that are struggling, to help those that are financially limited. So we just pray Yah's blessings upon you as you continue to obey his laws and commandments. <clears throat> Today we want to talk about the Torah, Yahweh's law, Yahweh's laws, Yahweh's instructions. So let's start out with, in Exodus 12, verse 49. This teaching is to encourage those that are already Torah observant. And if you just look up the word law in a good concordance, you'll find that there's hundreds of scriptures starting in the book of Genesis and going all the way through the New Testament. And for those that are still in Christianity, that you will see, and you should do your own research and study, just how much in the New Testament, <clears throat> especially, what you've been taught that the law has passed away or that Yeshua has ended the law is inaccurate. That is just a doctrine of man that is just a doctrine of paganism to get you to disobey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Now, let's just, I know I told you to turn to Exodus 12, but in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. So if the law has passed away as Christianity teaches, then why would it be considered sin when you transgress the law, when you disobey the law, when you um, disregard the law? See, that don't make sense. The Apostle John, who was Yahshua's beloved, he said, whoever commits sin transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if the law passed away or was done away with by Yeshua on the tree, why would years later the Apostle John say that when you disobey the law, you are committing sin? So that ends that topic right there. And if you're still in Christianity and you're having a hard time coming out of it, you need to just go through in your own personal study every scripture that talks about the law. And you will see that from Genesis through the New Testament, that Yahweh spoke through his prophets first in the, in the first covenant, then he spoke through his son, and then his apostles in establishing the Torah, in establishing the law. Here, let me show you another scripture. Um, let's see if 
I can find it real quickly in Romans 3.31. See, <clears throat> people have been taught so much um, falsehood concerning the law and that it is hard for them. They don't even want to hear it. And because of that, they're in danger of being lost. Romans 3.31 says, Do we nullify the law through faith? No, we establish the law. So Paul said, just because we walk by faith, just because we believe in the Messiah in Yeshua, and that he's redeemed us from the effects of the curse of the law, doesn't mean we nullify it. Doesn't mean we put a stop to it. As a matter of fact, Yeshua never told us not to live according to the law. He even said he did not come to do away with the law and the prophets, but he came to establish it. He came to fulfill it. He came to show you how to live according to the law. And then Paul said that we don't nullify it. We establish it. We preach it. We teach it. We live it. And Paul has said uh, in a variety of places that he, he lives according to the prophets and Yahweh's laws and commandments. He doesn't transgress it. And see, you and I need to be a people that are Torah observant. If you are a believer in the Hebrew Messiah, you cannot say that you don't need to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. You cannot say that Yahweh's laws and commandments are not important. If you do, you're not of Messiah Yeshua. He lived according to the Torah. He lived according to Yahweh's laws, statutes, and commandments. He kept them. And it doesn't matter who says it. The scripture says we need not to nullify the law, but we need to establish it. And what does one thing that Christianity does not do? They do not establish the law. They do not establish Yahweh's Sabbath. They do not establish what Yahweh says we should eat and what we should not eat. They do not establish Yahweh's feast days, Yahweh's set-apart days, Yahweh's holy days. They do not establish His name. As a matter of fact, over 6,000 times, they removed his name. Even today, most Christians tell you that whether you say Lord, God, Jesus, Yeshua, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's all the same. No, it's not. No, it's not. It, yeah, Yahweh said that we are not to take his name in vain. That means we render it useless, or we render it common, or we nullify it. We are not to do those things. That's his commandment. And yet Christianity says, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Christianity doesn't focus on it. And yet they still say that if you call upon the name of L-O-R-D, you'll be saved. That's not what is written. What is written is, if you call upon the name of Yahweh, Yahweh, you'll be saved. You have to call upon His name. Not the name of some made-up invention, L-O-R-D, or J-E-S-U-S, or G-O-D. But the name of Yahweh, through His Son, Yahshua. You know, I've got two teachings. One about that Yeshua was called the son of David and that he was called the son of man. He was never called L-O-R-D. 
he was never called G-O-D, but for some reason, I keep getting these other teachings, and I'm not able to teach that. So, at some point, Yahweh's going to release me to teach it, that the scripture talks about that people worshipped him, not as G-O-D, not as Yahweh, but as the son of David, as the son of man. They called him the son of man. Yahshua called himself the son of man. But that's another deal. So, let's go to Exodus 12:49. And we'll see that what the scriptures say, what the Torah says, what even the New Testament says about the law. And in verse 49 it says, There will be one law shall be to him that is home born. Now this is taken out of the W.E.B. version. And one law unto the home born or to the native born and unto the stranger that journeys among you. So Yahweh said there's only going to be one law. So if you're following or you're wanting salvation through the creator of the earth, there's only one law for you, and that's Yahweh's <clears throat> law. Yahweh's laws and commandments. Not the added laws and commandments that the rabbis came up with, but Yahweh's law. And see, that, that was the number one thing that Yeshua kept rebuking the rabbis about because they held on to their commandments, just like Christianity does today, more so than they obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And Yeshua said, you worship him in vain when you do this. Mm -hmm. You worship him in vain when you do this. And see, Christianity needs to come out of this paganism, and they need to start establishing what thus saith Yahweh, not what thus saith their doctrine, or the commandments of man, or the priests before them, or the pastors before them, or the prophets before them. You know, here's another thing. Second Chronicles says that when you believe the prophets you will prosper. He's not talking about these prophets of Gad that are around today that's, that are prophesying only about prosperity and wealth and riches. He's talking about the prophets in the Torah, in Yahweh's laws and commandments. Hebrews 1 verse 2 says that in various ways Yahweh established... Uh, here, let's turn there because... I'm butchering that verse. I'm not remembering it exactly. Let's turn to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 1. Verse 2, I believe. And it says, verse 1, God, Yahweh, having in past spoken to the fathers through the prophets, at many times and in various ways, has at the end of these days spoken to us by his son. So we see that Yahweh spoke through the prophets in the first covenant. And when it says that if you believe the prophets, you'll prosper, it's talking about the prophets in the Torah, in the law, in the instruction manual, if you would in the first covenant. So when you believe the prophets in the first covenant, Yahweh said, you will prosper. So if you're having a hard time prospering in these last days, I would encourage you to listen to and to begin to do and believe what the prophets are saying and what Yahweh said through the prophets. And one of those, and I know a lot of people in Torah have a hard time with this, one of those teachings is about giving. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua reemphasized giving. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. You know, the more you give, the more you're going to receive. Now, it may not come to pass in a week, in a month, in a year, or in 10 years. 
But if you just settle it in your heart that Yahweh commands us to be givers, to be tithers, to bring offerings, not only into the storehouse, but to help those around us in need, you know, at some point, and especially if you're keeping the Shabbat and you're learning to be Torah observant, you're going to prosper. And at some point, it's going to, his word will break through. All right, back to Exodus. Now let's go to Exodus 13, verse 9. Got an itch there. Sorry. Exodus 13, verse 9, it says that Yahweh's law may be in your mouth. Yahweh's law may be in your mouth. Yahweh's desire is that his law would be in your mouth. Now let's look at another verse. I didn't write this one down in my notes, but if you go to the book of Joshua, chapter 1, and verse beginning in verse 7, it says, Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. So that means no compromise. Don't justify not obeying his law. Whatever that is, if it's about the Shabbat, if it's about the feast days, if it's about giving tithes and offerings, if it's about food you are to eat or not to eat, it's about his name, whatever it is. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Yahweh said through the prophet Moses and then Josh, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, mm -hmm. and you will have good success. Now, if you remember, in the book of Luke, chapter 16, and you need to read that about the rich man, and uh, he died, and the beggar died, and the beggar was carried away by the angels, into Abraham's bosom, that's verse 22, the rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, that's key, and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. So obviously the rich man had some understanding of Torah. That he may dip his, he said, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abram said, son, remember that in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in the same way bad things. But here he is now comforted, and you are in anguish or torment. Besides all this, between us and you, there is a gulf fixed, that those who want to pass from here to you are not able, and that no one may cross over from there to us. And then uh, the rich ruler said, well, he said, Father, that you would send him to my house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them so that they won't come into this place of torment. But Abraham said to him, here's the key, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to him. Notice what was emphasized, the law and the prophets. Again, notice what was emphasized. The law and the prophets. If the law and the prophets weren't the focus thing, Abraham would not have said it. 
verse 30, he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. <clears throat> and he said to them, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead. So in other words, they were saying, even though Yahshua has risen from the dead, they're not going to listen to them if they don't listen to the law and the prophets. So the focus is, we need to listen to the law and the prophets. Now, Yeshua didn't put this in the, the scriptures for no reason. He had a purpose in it. That even though he knew he was going to rise from the dead, if they don't listen to the law and the prophets, him rising from the dead is going to have no effect over their life. Salvation is just not simply calling upon the name of Yahshua. It is a combination of calling upon the name of Yahweh through his son Yahshua and obeying the law and the prophets. Once you've called upon the name of Yahweh and Yeshua for salvation, you then will need to begin to live according to the law and the prophets and to be circumcised in your heart by Yahweh with Yahweh's laws and commandments. Uh, Hebrews and Jeremiah both testify to that. All right. Back to Exodus 16, 4. It says that I may prove, and this is Yahweh speaking to Israel, whether or not they will walk in my law or not. And see, many people might have been born from above, but then Yahweh's going to see if they're going to obey his laws and commandments and establish his laws and commandments like he commanded or not and if not even though they continue and they may do many wonderful works as as Yeshua said in Matthew 7 but he said they said you know we've healed in your name done miracles in your name prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and yet Yeshua said I never knew you why they did not obey or do or live or establish his laws and commandments, Yahweh's laws and commandments. And if you read up a little bit in Matthew 7, where it talks about broad is the way, and many people go down that way, but there are few, there are few, uh, I forget what that word few means. Linda, you remember? No. Okay, let's just go there and I'll show you what that word few means that Yeshua referred to. Um, hold on one second. Let's go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And I believe it's verse 13. Um, verse 14. It says, how narrow is the gate, and restricted is the way that leads to life. Few are those that find it. Now it says restricted. See, when you and I are set apart, we are restricted to live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And if we don't want to live according to them, you know, salvation, you're not going to have it. You're, you're rejecting Yahshua and Yahweh when you decide to live according to the, the easy way. Now, let's look at, at the, word, um, the word few. It means um, little. It also means... Um, Oh, what was the word? I did some research on it, and I can't remember what... The, puny, that's the word, puny. There will be puny. What does puny mean? 
we know that that's just small. You know, a small handful of people. But there will just be a few. Why did Yahweh say few? You know, many people teach that salvation is easy. All you got to do is call upon the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's not what Yeshua taught. There's a ministry out of North Alabama. Um, his name is Steve. And I, I just threw some things on Facebook by him where he teaches on this. Few are going to be saved. And those few are those that are seeking to live according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. And so... Yahweh said in Exodus 16, 4, that he's, he's going to test them to see whether or not they're going to live according to his laws and commandments or not. And then in verse 28, he says, How long will they refuse to keep my commandments and laws? And Yahweh is asking those that say they are a believer... And yet they, they reject his laws. They don't establish his laws. They don't teach his laws. They don't love his laws. They don't worship him for his laws. And he is saying to them, how long will they refuse? And if they continue in it, according to Yeshua, they're not going to be born saved. They're not going to have eternity with Yahweh. Now let's look at some verses in the Renewed Covenant. Romans 8, verse 4. It says that the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us. Why, if Paul's teaching that the Torah has passed away, why would he say that the law needs to be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Some time ago, Yahweh revealed to me that when you are walking after the flesh, you are going the way of paganism. You are going the way of Babylon. You are going the way of whatever you want. But when you walk after the Spirit, you are going the way of Yahweh's laws and commandments. You are going the way of the Torah. You are going the way of his instructions. So when you keep and you live according to the Spirit, it is synonymous to living according to the law. Hallelujah. Now look, I know we all know this, Matthew 5, 17. Yeshua said, I did not come to do away with the law and the prophets. So if through the Messiah's mouth, and he put no conditions on it, he didn't say, I did not come to do away with the law and the prophets until I go to the stake, or until I'm resurrected. No, he just said, I did not come to do away with the law and the prophets, but to establish them. Remember he said, that through the Apostle Paul, he said, we are to establish the law. Yeshua said, he came to establish the law and the prophets. All right, we talked about Luke 16. Let's turn the page in my notes. Romans 7, 14. Romans 7, 14. I want to encourage you. You need to learn Yahweh's laws and commandments. You need to keep Yahweh's laws and commandments. If you are born from above, there will be something in you, a passion, a zeal, a desire, a love to learn Yahweh's laws, to live according to Yahweh's laws, regardless of what others say regardless of any persecution, regardless of any 
um, condemnation you might receive from the from those who do not keep Yahweh's Shabbat or Yahweh's feast days or the new moon or whatever the case may be. You will have a passion, a zeal. That is if you are born from above. Okay, Romans 7.14, it says, For we know the law is spiritual. So Paul says that the law, excuse me, Yahweh's laws and commandments, his statutes, his ways, his instructions, is spiritual. It says Torah. And that we know the word law means Torah or instructions. Verse, look at <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 31. <clears throat> Romans 3, verse 31, it says, Do we nullify the law through faith? No, we establish the law. So, if you are going to a ministry, if you are part of a ministry that does not establish the law, you need to flee. You would be better off being at home on the Shabbat, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, watching teachings on YouTube, reading teachings by other Torah believers via Facebook, via um, YouTube or whatever, than it would be for you to go to a church that does not teach or establish Yahweh's Torah. Mm -hmm. Look in Romans 2.25. Paul said, For circumcision indeed profits. If... This is the only qualifier. If you are a doer of the law or the Torah. If you are a doer of the Torah. Now, if you are not a doer of Yahweh's laws and commandments, then circumcision is of no, no profit to you. All right, let's look in verse 13 of the same chapter, Romans 2, verse 13. For it isn't the hearers of the law who are righteous before Yahweh, but the doers of the law will be justified. It says right here, Paul, the Apostle Paul is saying, to the people of Rome who are coming out of paganism, who are coming out of worshiping uh, false gods, which include a trinity of gods, just like Christianity, and that's where Christianity got it from. He is saying, for it isn't the hearers of the law who are justified before Yahweh, but the doers of the law. The doers of the Torah. He's teaching this to people that are coming out of Roman paganism. And he says they will be justified. Those that do. Remember what James says? It's not only hearers of the word, the Torah, but doers of the word or the Torah or the law. You have to be a doer. You have to be a doer. Deuteronomy 17, or yeah, ver, chapter 17, verse 9. It says, Yahweh is saying that he would, that they would learn to fear Yahweh, to keep all the words of this law and do them. It's not just about hearing it, but it's about doing them. And again, I would encourage you, look up every scripture that has the word law in it. And in the Hebrew, it means Torah or instruction. Yahweh's Torah, Yahweh's instructions, Yahweh's laws. Okay, back to Romans 7.12. Or the book of Romans. We haven't read 7.12 yet. Romans 7 verse 12. And this, remember, Paul said faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Torah, mm -hmm. hearing by his, Yahweh's laws and commandments. 
as you listen to this, and I would encourage you to listen to it over and over and read over and over these scriptures and many more. I can't get to them all. And faith will come for his laws, to live according to his laws. Verse 12 of Romans 7 says, the law is holy. Paul said the law is holy. And so, you know, what Christianity teaches and what Christianity teaches, they've been taught that the law was done away with. Why would Paul say the law is holy, set apart, if, why would he say it's set apart if it's holy? He wouldn't. So you're misinterpreting what Paul is saying. You're, re you're taking something he is saying out of context. Paul is saying the law is holy. He even said in Acts 24 that he lives according to the law. He lives according to the prophets. And he does them. Why would someone that lives that way say, say it's passed away with? He wouldn't. And then look in verse 22. He says, for I, and this is Paul speaking, for I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inner man. So he delights. He loves. He has a zeal for the law of Yahweh. From his spirit man. In his spirit. Inside of him. And why would he say that? If what he what you interpreted what he said is accurate. That the law has passed away. And, and that's not accurate. That's not what he's saying. He's saying the laws that the rabbis added have passed away. Not Yahweh's laws and commandments. They can never pass away. Not one, one jot or one tittle, Yeshua said, will pass away. Not one dot, not one period, not one comma, not one little bitty thing will pass away. Galatians 3.21, and we're beginning to wind this down. Galatians 3.21. It says, is the law against the promises of Yahweh? Yahweh forbid. So Paul is saying the law, Yahweh's commandments, are not against Torah. Are not against his laws and commandments. Look what is, is said to Timothy in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. He said, we know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now we know that the rabbis did not use it properly. Did not use the law accurately. They put heavy burdens on the people. They bound the people with their added laws and commandments. And Yeshua came to lift those burdens off of the people and to get them reestablished in the original commandments of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Okay, two more verses. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. One of the reasons that I'm emphasizing many of the passages out of the renewed covenant is so that those that are still bound up in Christianity and are still not getting it, or maybe they're getting it, you know, halfway or three quarters of the way, that they would see just how much the renewed covenant emphasized Yahweh's laws, Yahweh's Torah, Yahweh's instructions. They were teaching it, and that's all they were teaching. These things that Christianity, the doctrines that Christianity has come up with, you know, all you hear, you know, is about healing and, and prosperity and deliverance, and all those things have a place. 
But that's all they teach. Even the titles. You look at titles that people put in Christianity on their teachings. It's just a farce. It's just fluff. You know, the other day I saw that, and I, and I was just as guilty. I was just as guilty. We need to come back to Yahweh's laws and commandments. We need to teach and to establish Yahweh's laws and commandments. All right, Hebrews 8.10 says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Now, some people read this and say, see, that's what it says. It's only for, for Israel. It's not for Christians. If you want to be grafted into Israel, if you want salvation that comes through Messiah Yeshua, then this is for you. You cannot have salvation from Messiah Yeshua and then live according to paganism, celebrate pagan holidays, participate in paganism, use a pagan name for the Messiah. You can't do it. Salvation is of the Jews. Yahshua said that to the Samaritan woman. Salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of Israel. There is only one law, remember? There is only one law. You want to be a, a to journey with Israel into salvation, into the promised land? There is only one law, and that's Yahweh's law. Not Christianity's laws and doctrines, but Yahweh's laws. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my laws into and write them in their hearts. And I will be the, to them Elohim, and they shall be my people. Who will be his people? Those that he puts his laws and commandments into their minds and write them on their heart. If that is not you, then you are not part of, of the salvation and of the house and of the covenant of the creator of the earth, Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua. Through the son of David, through the son of man. You may be following J-E-S-U-S. -S, you may be going to churches. You may be giving your tithes and offerings to those churches. You may be worshiping J-E-S-U-S -S or L-O-R-D or G-O-D. But that does not mean you are part of the kingdom of Yahweh. That does not mean you are grafted in. That does not mean you have salvation. There are many millions of people that classify them as Christians. And yet Yeshua said, few, few would go the narrow way. What is the narrow way? Yahweh's laws and commandments. But broad or easy is the way to go down the broad path. And that's the way Christianity is. They say it's easy. Just name the name. But they don't name the name. They name the Christian's name. They name a false name. And even Paul emphasized in the book of Corinthians that there is coming a false messiah that will teach you things contrary and that contradict the Torah, that contradict Yahweh's laws and commandments. And in plain English would say, they will teach you, you don't have to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. They will teach you another gospel. And the world is filled with another gospel. And praise Yahweh that there are a handful and there are a few of us that, had, that Yahweh grabbed hold of us and opened our eyes. And when we were taught it, we ran with it. 
We saw it in the Word, and we accepted it. And it began to produce 30, 60, and 100-fold. Praise Yahweh. All right, we went over this in the beginning. 1 John 3, 4, it says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if the law wasn't a focal point after believing in Messiah Yeshua, then John would have never said this. So Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for this teaching. And we pray, Father, that people would understand that the focal point of Faith in Messiah, once they are born from above, is your law. We need to learn your law. We need to desire your law. We need to covet your law, your Torah, your instructions. We need to walk by faith in them. And we need to see what you say concerning your laws and commandments. What you say, what the Messiah has already said in the renewed covenant concerning the law and that we are to establish it we are to establish <clears throat> the law we are to establish the law just as yeshua messiah said he did not come to do away with the law but to establish it so we just keep building upon the foundation of the law of the prophets of the torah of Yahweh's laws and commandments, his instructions. And we pray, Father, that people would receive your law, that they would receive it by faith, that they would receive it, and that your law, your word, your Torah, your instructions will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold, and that we would not veer from your law to the right or to your left. And we thank you that your law would give us good success. Your law would cause us to prosper, as you said through the prophets in Second Chronicles 20, verse 20, as well as in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And Father, we worship you, and we thank you for this Sabbath. As we seek to keep it set apart, as we seek to continue learning about your laws and commandments. And Father, those that have fallen away, those whose house are not in order, those who are not obeying your laws and commandments, those that have drifted for whatever reason, we pray that you would restore them. We pray that you would heal them. We pray that you would reestablish them in your laws and commandments. And where we have failed not to keep not to honor and not to obey your laws and commandments. We ask you to forgive us, Father. We ask you to cleanse us of all unrighteousness by the blood of the Lamb. And we thank you, Father, that as we continue to obey your law, your laws and the blood of the Messiah will justify us and set us in right standing with you. So, Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you, and Father, we bless you. If you want to connect with us, you can connect with us on our website, YahwehYahshuaAssembly.com. We have a page on Facebook, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly. You can connect with me, Mark Pulley, or um, our page, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly, our group, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly, as well on Facebook. Until next time, Yahweh bless you, Yahweh make his face shine upon you, and Yahweh give you his shalom, shalom, that you would lack for nothing, that you would lack for nothing, that you would be strong in Yahweh and in the power of his might. Until next time, Yahweh bless you. Shalom, shalom.